minute. You are. You are joyous. You are friendly. You are... You can name it. You're exceptional. You are beautiful. You are... You name it. You can fill in that blank, can't you? There are some other things that can be filled in that blank that can be derogatory. You are really a jerk. Or you really are... <laughs> I won't say that word. <laughs> you are just irritating. You are just... You know, we've used those words, haven't we? You are. They're very powerful words. I can look at the congregation. You're wonderful. I'll say it like you mean it, right? You are. They're very, very powerful words because they help identify who we think they are. We help identify characteristics. You're brilliant. You're, you name it. You can fill it in. Our gospel today has those words in it. And it's Jesus speaking to us as disciples, as true believers. He is saying, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. But what does it mean to be the light? What does it mean to be the salt of the earth? First of all, we have to go down a little bit further into what our gospel was today in which Jesus is saying that he did not come to end the law. First of all, he came to fulfill it. He didn't stop the law and the prophets. He fulfilled it. Not one dot, one not, not anything's going to be changed. Because one of the things we have to realize, first of all, is the law. What is the law about? The law is the Ten Commandments, isn't it? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. You know, you shall have no other idols before me. Keep the Sabbath holy. Go on all the way down through them. And you'll see what the law is about. The question then is, can we fulfill the law? Can we actually serve the law? Can't bear false witness. Don't covet that neighbor's boat that they have. Or his motorcycle. It's hard to keep the law. But as we look at the law, what it really tells us is how sinful we are. The deeper we look, it tells us how far separated we are from God. We can't do it on our own works. And Jesus is saying, that's true. You can't do it on your own works. You can't do it by your own power. But the more we see that, then the more we see God's grace. And we experience God's grace because we know that we can't make ourselves righteous. When he's talking about the Pharisees and he says, you must be more righteous than the Pharisees. The Pharisees walked around thinking, oh, I'm great, I can do this, I can do that. I'm, you know, perfect in the law. I'm perfect in the way that I worship. I go to synagogue every Saturday. I do my prayers every day. But they miss what the law was about. The law was a guideline, but then we realize we can't follow it, and so God sent His Son to save the world, to reconcile us. And when we realize that, we realize how precious we are to Him. We realize how much, when He says, you are, it means. You see, when we've accepted that, then we've come to that point of saying, okay, Lord, you are the Lord of my life, and I see that grace. I see what you've done for me. And then he tells them, going back, you are the light of the world. You see, that light shines. They see who he is. You, they see that grace that he has given you. I think it's interesting when you Google something and you Google lights over America or something like that, you know, from outer space. And you don't have to be a geography major. Because you can tell where the biggest cities are, can't you? I mean, you look at New York. You look at Orlando, Miami. You can look at Los Angeles. And there's light. And you know where it is. And then there's the dark places too, like out in the desert. Where there really isn't any light pollution. Light shows us and covers the darkness. And that's what we're to share. is God's light showing the way. When I come in here in the morning, the sun's not up. 
and it's pitch black in here. Well, not quite pitch black, but it's dark in here. And the one thing that I always notice is a candle that's over the ombre where the sacraments are kept. Do you ever notice that when you come in? You know, that leads us to where Christ is, the body and blood of Christ. It reminds us that He is there. They put the light over the ombre initially so that people could find it in an emergency when it's dark. They didn't have light switches then. But the candle stayed there so that you could take the reserved sacrament out to the world if somebody was in need of it. The light directs us to Jesus. And our light should shine so that others see who He is and about His grace. He said, you are the salt of the earth. Now, Tilly will tell you that I like my cooking shows. She has her shows, I have mine. And I don't care what they are. They even have chopped Canada now. So for those from Canada, you're in the loop. But the one thing I see on these shows is, as they're doing the recipes, what do they always say? And some salt. Bam! Oh, that's Emerald. Bam! And then when they evaluate the food and they're looking at the chefs and they're saying, okay, well, this one really doesn't have flavor. The other night, Emerald said, well, just a few hints of, you know, sea salt would have made it better. You see, salt has a multi-purpose. Salt is a preservative. Think about the ancient mariners when they would travel. What did they do? Or even when they were out west, they would salt the meat to why? To preserve it. It helps purify. Think of the Dead Sea. I saw something about the Dead Sea the other day. And there was a person floating in the Dead Sea reading a book like this. Nothing grows because of the saltiness. It's purified. In Leviticus 2, God tells them to put salt with their offering as more of a purification and to preserve. In Chronicles... God had promised that there would, the offspring of David would continually be on the throne. This is what the prophets had foretold and Jesus is off of that line. He says this, Ought you not know that the Lord God of Israel gave the kingship of Israel over to David and his sons by a covenant of salt? Something that's pure, something that's holy, something that is to be. God has made us to be the salt of the earth, to share His Word, to help others to see what He's done. Our words don't have to be words of great eloquence. Paul even writes, Paul was brilliant. And Paul even writes, My, those words, I didn't come with you trying to bamboozle you with big words that you don't understand to make myself look really cool or so learned what he did was he came in meekness and he came with the word so that others could share it they could understand it and we do the same things he writes in the book of Colossians he says let your speech always be gracious seasoned with salt so that you may know how you ought to answer each person you see God looks at us and says you are the light First of all, he entrusts us with the words to show light in darkness. He entrusts us with his words to show others the way. And I get up in the morning, especially on Sunday mornings, till he's still asleep, and I don't turn on the lights in the room. But I feel myself around and hope I don't stub my toe. Then I'd wake her up if I did. But the point is, is that, you know, we seek that light. The minute you turn something on, the darkness is gone. In those days, the lamps were really small, but yet even a small lamp will generate light and scatter the darkness. We are to be that light to the world, to scatter the darkness so others may see God's grace, His love, and His mercy. I think it's amazing that God entrusts us to do that. You are very powerful words. But it also means that not just individually, but corporately, we are to be a light. 
We are to be a light to this community so that others may see what God is doing, the works that He's doing. We are to be the salt to preserve the gospel and share it with others as a corporate body. I asked somebody the other day and said, if St. Elizabeth just went away, I mean, all of a sudden, it's not here anymore. Poof, it's gone. What kind of impact would it have on the community? Would they know we were gone? Would it impact our community? Or would they say, well, just another thing fell away. They don't... What do we have? How do we impact this community? How do we impact each other? Are we that light to each other? Are we the salt to each other to help preserve our relationships with God? Do we reach out to the community in a way that if we were gone, would they really remember and wonder if we were gone? Would they really care? Are we the light? Are we the salt? Are we light to each other? Are we salt to each other? God calls us and Jesus says to us, true disciples, says, you are the light. You are the salt. Let the world see. That's what he's saying to you and me. If you had a mirror right now, could you look in it and say, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. Not A, but the, Because there is no other way. Are you salt? Are you light? Can you reach out to somebody and be that light? The words, you are, are very powerful. They can pierce us to the heart by what we say with them. You're a jerk. Or we can... Relish them when we say, you know, you're my joy, you're my companion. You are someone that shares your life with me. Thank you. You're the one who cares. You're the one who shared the gospel with me. Today our society looks for that. Our kids are so distant from everybody. They are so alone because of technology. They say that this is the loneliest generation because of texting and because of Facebooking and how many, how many of y'all Facebook and you get a like on there? You know? Oh, I like that. I posted yesterday that I was brewing an IPA. I've had dozens of likes. But it's not somebody who I talk to. It's not somebody who I have a relationship with. The kids today, the youth today, the 20-somethings are looking for something solid. They don't want the pop and circumstance. They want relationships. And we can be that to every generation. We can be that light to show them God's grace and mercy. We can be the salt that preserves His gospel and shares His gospel and helps purify this wicked world. Are you salt? Are you light? Jesus says, if you're my disciple, you are light and you are salt. Amen.